Hello, and welcome back to Single Lady Married Women. All right, welcome. I'm Monica Congero. And I'm Brees Wilson, and thank you for tuning in to our very first episode. Hopefully, you listened to our episode zero and you know all about us. New York City women here living the life. Monica's married, I'm single. And we're going to start off today with. with some differences and some similarities. And, and this really struck us as we have um, become friends, how, how much um, family impacts what we do and how we do it and, and the um, image that uh, families have of the single member and the married Yeah, tell me about it. And matter of fact, family. as we're talking about holidays, and since I'm single, I think one of the things maybe maybe a, a lot of single people might be dealing with is just like when you go to holiday events with your family and they're like, oh, are you dating someone? Are you married? Are you? Blah, 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 blah. So and there's a whole there's a whole litany. There's a whole they, they, they give you the whole rundown. Yeah. You got to come prepared for that. So, um, yeah. Well, actually, we weren't sure we were going to talk about holidays yet. But you know what? It's November 30th. That means with the it. holidays are here, so yeah. uh, maybe we'll start right there. What's your holiday plan this um, year? Do you have one? Not yet. No. I may be going to Orlando for New Year's Eve. For Christmas, probably with my nieces and nephews, who I absolutely love. Um, they're so amazing in Virginia. And, yeah, that's pretty much it, which is great. The good thing about being single is that I can kind of be like, well... Do I want to go to Vegas? Do I want to go see family? Do I want to stay home under the covers? You know, um, yeah. But it's, I, it's I, nice being coupled. Totally, totally. We are all about love on this show, so that's great. It's nice being coupled, but I do like that I can kind of be like, hmm, let me think about it, and then make my decision from there. Sometimes I want to just run away. <laughs> I'll be, I'll be quite honest about what that. I just, I you just, just want to. You just got married, and you I, also well, have, I'll take him with me. There's newlyweds. There's another and there's, set of newlyweds in your family. Yeah, your daughter yeah, his, um, in law just got married. Your stepdaughter, my just stepdaughter. Got married. stepdaughter. Sorry, your yeah. stepdaughter just got married. Yes, she just got married. Right. In so October. is there going to be a big shindig? Uh, for what the holidays? I don't yeah. know. We're still we're still doing it in Manhattan in the apartment because because that's a whole other discussion right, about right, this right. house that we just bought and uh, got a lot of so, things yeah. going on here but yeah. um no often i really just want to want to bow out of the holidays Why? it's too much pressure it's oh. too much pressure to to make everything somehow how it's supposed to be i don't know how is it supposed to well, be well that's the thing i just don't know and I've done it both, and I've had great Christmases where I've decorated every corner of, <laughs> of the house, and I've had Christmases with one little Charlie Brown tree and, Aww. you know, dollar store decorations. And and sometimes that's the perfect thing. Yeah. So, so what is this pressure? Where does this pressure come from? I don't know. You know, I kind of, I get more pressure around family reunions to go, which I don't go. Sorry. Or Family show up reunions. last minute because that's when I get the most questions from every cat, dog, pony, and everybody in my wow. family that I haven't seen in forever. That's when they give me the real. So is it your your generation, your <sighs> siblings, or is it no, your mom, it's, it's your aunts? Your... Well, it's both. It's both. It's my cousins. And they, you know, it's, it's all of them. But for Christmas, I'm lucky enough to have just the immediate family. They already know the deal, you know. I think that one of the fun things... No. Um, I'm blanking. There's so a fun good. thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm done. There's one of those fun things. Um, my kids are split on mm -hmm. Christmas. So I have all adult. Maybe it's because there's no grandchildren yet. You know, that's I, when you'll be busy for that's, Christmas. That's when it will, will come back around you better to, enjoy uh, your to making solitude. it exciting. But really, uh, somebody suggested going to Hawaii, and I'm like, uh huh, sounds great. You should. Just sounds great. Well, it's too late now. It's November 30th. I can't. Too late. <laughs> no such thing. See, singletons would be looking for a cheap That's flight. That's true, and I'm making and this be plan. Like, you know I'd what? Say, well, for next year, I'll make this plan for next year. <laughs> Why don't you go this year? It's too um, late. So I do want to talk about the difference between lifestyle, being single, and being married. Okay. So I mean, that's one of the things we bonded on when we talked about when we initially discussed doing this podcast and. It's funny because I totally, I love being part of a couple. I think being part of a couple is awesome. You have somebody to spend time with. 
um, somebody to snuggle with, which is really great. Um, someone to talk about, like if your day has been stressful and you come home. Um, I just feel like it's a could be can be if it's a healthy relationship, a really good source of support. Um, I do have to say that uh, like one time, my girlfriend and I we just happened to be texting each other at one a.m. And I had just came out of the gym at 1 a.m. And she had just came from babysitting her nieces and nephews in the, um, for her sister and her sister's her brother-in-law. And we were like, what's up? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? And we are like, yeah, let's go do something. So we literally met at CBS at like 1.30 in the morning and rummaged through the sale, cosmetic sales rack. Mm -hmm. And like I had like a polio cheese, if they make polio anymore, cheese string cheese string I ate in the store I paid for it and we just kind of like tried on crazy lipsticks for 99 cents and like played with stuff and I remember going home thinking if I was in a relationship there's no way I'd be out at 1 30 in the morning I mean here's the thing it's not that I don't this is my view it's not that you can't go out at 1 a.m. when your relationship with your friends not you're restricted right but I probably would have just turned over and snuggled and been like, yo, girl, I'll take you for like lunch. Let's have lunch tomorrow if you're bored. But I did enjoy that I could get out of my bed, even though I was already out, but I could if I wanted to get out of my bed, be like, let's go to a diner. Let's talk shit. Excuse my language. Let's listen to some music or let's go rummage through the CVS um, sale thing. It was a pretty liberating moment. Mm -hmm. So that's what I will say that I did like. I do like about single life that I can. Kind of just be spontaneous and not be like, hey, honey, you know, I know it sounds crazy, but uh, my friend's at the store and we kind of want to. So, yeah. Well, would you call up a married friend and ask her? No. To do this? So you wouldn't even call no, and ask. No, she'd probably be snuggling up. Oh, that's making. I'm going to call you at 1 a.m. You're going to call me at 1 a.m. Bob's going to be like, oh, well, hell the, no. The phone will be off. <laughs> <laughs> and that is my point, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> but I have been on the phone at 1 and 2 in the morning with with some of my girlfriends that I've had since college. Oh, that's great. Um, one in particular, we talk at all odd times and and it always was um oh you know monica's on the phone and when and in fact just recently uh, i hadn't caught up with my high school friend um we kept missing each other and been a couple of months mm -hmm. and um it started the phone conversation started in the afternoon bob came home from work i was still on the phone <laughs> and I, I think we were on the phone for three hours and he's like what are you what are you talking about <laughs> everything and he, he, you know, he came by a few times. He's still on the phone. Yeah, I'm still on the phone. And, and I'm and, not getting off. And I'm not getting soon. off. And he was fine with that, but it was really kind of laughable to him that I would have that much to talk about. And he's looking at me like I'm a creature from another planet. I was like, No, I have things to talk about. I'm a woman. I, I gotta, t I gotta talk, I like and we to have talk. to catch up. <laughs> and uh, and I think that's just a, a a general thing. I don't know how many men like to talk on the phone. Yeah. Overall. But, you know, they all live in different places. She's upstate um, somewhere, you know, so we don't see each other in person. We don't make yeah. coffee dates. We get on the phone. We make phone dates and we, we say, all right, clear the decks. We're going to catch up now. Um, but I've always done that. And in fact, remember when um, phone calls used to cost you yes, money by I the do minute? Remember. Yes. We are at dating ourselves, but that's yeah, what that's it is. Yeah, that's okay. It was, it was message units. That's what they <laughs> called them. They called them message units. And oh man, I racked up phone bills like, like and I was like, too bad. That's the way it is. That's I, right. I, you know. You know, funny thing, I, when I was a flight attendant, I remember being on the jump seat with this guy, a single guy, and he's like, oh, you know, as women, I don't understand when you talk, you know, and they do all this. So I said, okay, so you know how women are. We like to verbally express ourselves. I'll just put it that way. We're very blessed verbally. You know how women are. If you don't like it, you should date another sex then. You should not date women. And don't complain about women talking a lot or liking to shop or liking to do any of the things that they say that women like to do. Then don't date women. Make it fair. Guys yeah. like to do what they and like that, to do. And, exactly. And that was my next thing. If I don't, if you don't like guys doing guys things, then don't date guys. So, 
he was like, okay then. Okay, I never quite saw it like that. I'm like, hey, you know, we like to verbally express ourselves. Men like to express themselves different ways, and it all works out. But I am glad that you did have some, you do have regular bonding time with your girlfriends. Because yes, that's very important to me. And these are friends I have had, like I said, since high school, since college, um, graduate school. You know, we're, we're counting the decades that, that we Aww. are friends. And I have always found the time to maintain that. And that's really important to me. That is important. Um, but the, the, the rest of that equation, if you will, and there I go with my math references, mm-hmm. um, is that if it's time for me and Bob, then, you know, then I'm not on the phone for three hours. Or right. I'll say, hey, when's a better time? Is This is not a good time. And I'm sure you do that, too. You have other oh, commitments yeah. or other situations. Oh, yeah. So it's all this balance and juggling. And those were the two... I, I wrote my little my little list here, <laughs> balance and juggling, and um, and what I'm finding that I'm adjusting to is finding time for myself. It's not so much for my friends, but it's just finding time for myself to do what I want to do, and and I can totally own that. Um, I'm approaching this as a couple now, so I do everything with more than myself in mind. And right. um, I was in a class yesterday, um, an improv class, which was a whole other adventure for me. But he said, you're allowed to be selfish. I was yeah. like, really? Who, who, really? Sense of self, time for self. I'm like, wow, I completely forgot that. Right. And that was, and I don't know, as a, as a single person. Oh, we if got you, a lot of time for ourselves. Well, if you... <laughs> If you consider that we as, a lot um, of time. <laughs> you know, as a given, and 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 I think I must have some kind of of frame of reference where I consider myself kind of down the list, uh, and because you're a mom now, well, that's then, a whole uh, other thing. Then now, I'm a mom too. Yeah, you have time now for that, but if you like when you were married before and you were raising kids, though, I wonder like how much time did you have for your girlfriends then? Because that's a All whole right. other element that you're throwing in. Like, I find when I have friends that are married, they just have a baby, I kind of give them space. Like, I want to be there for them, but I have to respect not only do they have their husband as a priority, but that baby needs attention and needs mm-hmm. love and needs caring. So, of course, I was offered help. But there is something there if you have a tight friendship with someone to navigate through if you're single and it's not that you'd have anything to do because we all have we have things to do when we're single, contrary to some popular opinion. You know, we fill our schedules, but you know, we have to like be respectful of and considerate. And it sometimes it's a challenge if you really want to talk to your friend and you know that they're needs. So, that. what's wrong with coming over where the baby is? There's like, nothing coming, wrong with that. Coming, I say it that way because. Um, well, I can speak from experience, all right? So most of my friends don't have children. Right. And actually, oh, Ronnie, my same friend from high school, mm-hmm. among others, she would come out to me. I didn't go into Brooklyn to see her. Right. She came out to yeah, see me. Yeah, but you're like that. But some women, they check out well, to another universe. And I'm not blaming them for that because maybe their husband helps. Maybe their husband's busy working. So some women, even without kids, in a relationship period... And you tell me if you've never had a friend like that. They literally are just off the planet, off the grid. They have a man now. They have a boyfriend. They have a girlfriend if they're into women. And they're just, you don't, like, bye. Now, I have not never been like that. Well, I, I lie. I lie. We're going to go back. This is how I learned about this. You did Many, this. many moons ago. I was with someone for five years. And I had a good friend before that we used to hang out all the time. We had the best time. And I literally, I was young. I was 22. I dropped off the grid. And this is how I learned, ladies and gentlemen, this is how I learned to never do that again. I have never done it since. I called her when I finally broke up with this guy. I was 27. And I called her up. And she said to me, and I'll never forget it, and I thank her to this day for saying, she said, oh, you don't get to, like, I haven't seen you or talked to you in years. You don't get to just call me back up, and now you want to be friends. And it hit me hard. But I'm so thankful because ever since then, since I was 27, I have boyfriends. Whoever I'm dating, I make time for my girlfriends. And when I get married, I'm making time for my girlfriends. Yes, my husband's a, cre- a priority. Whoever I'm dating is if we're serious or we're taking it to another level, it's a priority. But I make time for my girlfriends. 
So, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So um, I make time for them. <laughs> and I have to thank Nikki, wherever you are, Nikki. Thank you for that because I was not aware even of it. So, again, I'm not knocking women who are like this, but there are people who just drop off the grid and how to deal with that like how to be, you miss your friend let me throw like this you're out there you're special like well, that you're I don't know more evolved, I, I hope but. I I hope I've always done that I feel like I have done that um, people do come and go and you do get to be in different places and right. I actually had a single friend way you know back when we were in our 20s I was married to Bill Bill was my um, my husband's name the husband who passed away and um, she stood me up. And this was back before cell phones. Yeah, I'm really dating myself yeah. now. And I had to go find a phone. And she was like, well, I just thought you'd meet Bill. You left me standing here in the lobby because you thought that would be okay. Well, no, Bill's busy. He's doing something else because I was doing this with you. Right, right. It, it doesn't work that way. And, you know, and now I'm, I wasn't friends with her anymore because there's a respect thing yeah. and it, it's it's making allowances for everybody's time and energy and that's true now and I think that's true right. between single people and married couples mm. yikes get you get what happens when you, your friends get married or y'all get married and you can't stand the other person <gasps> whoa what happens when you inherit friends and you're like okay think okay um they're coming over for dinner. <laughs> okay. You know, what's so, that like? What's that like? Um, I don't, I, you know, I don't, I can't think of someone's that I know that's been in a relationship that I didn't care for. Well, I'm sure there is, but I can't think of it now. But, um, you know, I just try to respect my friend's wishes. And if my friend's happy, then I'm happy. I have been known to go to a couple of boyfriends when my friends go to the bathroom and go, look. What's your intentions? And I've gotten yelled at a few times for that by my girlfriends, but I don't care. Because mm. I want them to know that absent of their father, their brother, or whoever else they have in their life, that somebody is looking out for them. Yeah. And somebody cares about, you know, what their intentions is my, are with my girlfriends. So I don't apologize for that. <coughs> I got a cough. But, um, yes, I've had some girlfriends that are, like, awesome and some girlfriends, like, really. And I'm just, I'm kind of nice about it, but I want to let them know I mean business. What are your intentions with my girl? Because she's mm. amazing. She's got a great heart, and I just want to know where you're at. Yeah. She didn't ask. She's probably not going to ask. But I need to know because I will find out where you live. Sorry. I had a friend, who asked, I, I had, I had a, a friend who asked Bob that. Good. One of my guy friends. And he's like, what are your intentions? Good. Yeah, and right what did Bob think? He, Bob said his intentions were honorable. Very nice. So there you go. And now they are they are friends. <laughs> um, now I've been talking about um, friends I've had for a long time. You and I are, are new friends. We're new friends. We're and new I friends. love Monica. And, She's amazing. And I love Brees. And I think this is going along great. And we're both making time. Like you, you've traveled. You've traveled a lot yeah. since I've met you. I and love travel. I know you do. Yeah, it's that flight attendant in me. I just, I just, I feel at home on an airplane or in an airport. I just love it. But and I think that's really cool. Now I've tra Well, I, we we went on a honeymoon. We went to Hawaii. <laughs> we went to Hawaii for two weeks. It was great. Great place to travel. It was great. Um, but that's a whole different lifestyle. And I've tried, like when you've called, even. Where am I going with this? Like <laughs> when you've worry. called me on the weekend, you have right up front said, "Oh, is this." Is this a bad time? Because I know this is time you're spending with Bob. And consideration. A, and it is a big consideration. And sometimes it's worked and sometimes it hasn't. Um, you know, sometimes I've made the time and um, and sometimes we've had to reschedule. But I've also been very careful with I knew you were traveling. I think when you were in Vegas the last time, I was mm -hmm. like, no, if this is the time you have – this is the time we're going to talk, mm -hmm. and um, and then I switched to the other one. I said, "Hey, you know, Bob, I got to take this phone call." He was he was great. He was fine. I like Bob. Yeah, I like him too. You, I hope so. You yeah. married him. <laughs> I married it's him. It's a little late now. Um, and and that I have to say is a whole nother discussion of of the second marriage of getting married when you're not kids, and how much 
how, how formed you are and how much of your own person you are and how does that, you know, when you get married when you're, when you're 23, everything's like, oh, okay, oh, it's great, oh, it's fine, sure, whatever you want. Well, the second time around, we're like, okay, wait, you have this need, I have that need, we have to do this. You do it that way? I don't do it that way. Do we have to do it that way? Oh, okay, well. <laughs> it's like finding your, your ways together. Yeah, so and, to, and that's a very new different. organism is being formed. Out of two independent, complete <laughs> organisms, not two young, unformed, you know, yeah, organisms. I the closest I came to that when, like I said, when I lived with somebody for five years, I remember when I when I when that disbanded, I remember being somewhere thinking, "Oh, I really love that movie." Then I was like, "I don't really love that movie." He loved that movie. I didn't even like that movie, but uh. at the time, I was just so like enamored and like wow okay yeah okay great or or like they were like oh honey you don't look good in denim and I remember thinking I don't look good in denim and then like after like six months later I was like I look great in denim what's talking about so it's kind of and it was like I said I was very young and naive and impressionable but I just like it took me a while to separate like and really filter out who I was and what I really liked versus who they were and what they really liked and then so I don't know like I said how I would that be now but how would that be now if you were? In oh, well, I know exactly who I am and what I like. So we can play whatever so, he so wants. So if somebody and what he told likes, you now that you didn't, look I'd good laugh and, and I'd okay. probably run because, <laughs> yeah, I'd probably run because even using that language, you don't look good in something is yeah. a little bit red flagish to me. Yeah, saying, "Honey, you know, you look better in that," or "I like you in this," might work better than just straight out. Do Especially you? at this point in my life, if I don't know what I look good in, then... They, this yeah. trouble. <laughs> yeah, just for me. Everybody I else, agree. do what you got to do. But yeah. I think, uh, yeah. you know, I think I, I, I'm comfortable with who I am, and I'm comfortable with my style, and I'm open to... Um, I, I, I change it up every once in a while, and I love it. I'm open to all of that. But I'm not impressionable um, or, like, open to what anyone off the street says about mm. like what I should because we all that's what's great about we're fortunate to live in a free country and we can just like have moods and dress any way we want and it's a beautiful thing and I'm grateful for it so yeah. self expression is the key it's a ticket so again I want to <laughs> I want to throw it out there to listeners and and we can we can have a recap on some of these things I'd I'd like to know what you're thinking out there about um well, there's that word navigation again, but also compromise. There's another good word. Compromise. Compromise. Yeah. How you keep your sense of self, how you you keep your own motivation, and you compromise and make it work with someone else. Yeah. Girlfriends. Right. Or you know, single or married or. Or if you have a boyfriend or a girlfriend, like how what what does compromise mean to you? Yeah. That's a good question. You know, what does compromise mean to you? To me, compromise mean compromising. To me, compromising means that I take in the other person's opinions and um, considerations and observations, and they take in mine, and we decide on something that's mutually beneficial. Mm. And I, I like, in my mind, I like relationships, even my friendships that are win-win. That's what I strive for doesn't always unfortunately doesn't always turn out like that but I strive for okay you like this I like that well let's let's have it all let's do both right. if it's possible if not like what there's like what else can we find or create together that could be something we're both happy with hmm. that's my view of compromise mm -hmm. um, there are certain things I feel you don't compromise on <laughs> Do and we want to go there's there? a, um, I guess a, a you pause. don't compromise on. Well, there's core values you don't yeah, compromise core values. on. Yeah, and, and that's been well, yeah, that's one. been an interesting thing again um, in this new relationship to to find somebody who has the same set of um, of values in the first place. Yeah, and you go, oh, we think the same. In fact, I, I remember on our first date having this discussion, going, oh, I agree with that. Oh, no, I don't agree with that. I literally, that's, that's what I said. Oh, yes, I can see that because right, whatever right, the topic right. was. And then, I, and then another time I went, no, I don't see it that way. I see it this way. And, and the conversation went on from there. But I was very definitive in um, my position, where I stood on this, that, or the next thing. Wait, so now that you say that, I want to say that there is a wave of, of 
how do I want to say this? So now that you say that, I want to say it seems to be what's happening now. And I'm not saying that it's a new, new thing, but even if you read magazine articles, this whole thing with women, like, be nice, like, don't be confrontational, don't be this way and that way. And what I do love about the old school women, you know, not old, but old school women, is that they were 100% them. And if you were going to be with them, you know, you just met them at their where they were, and then the compromise can go from there. Well, now I notice in the single world, there's a whole discussion about, you know, being nice, not rocking the boat. You know, this is New York City. There's so many people. And I'm glad you mentioned that because here you are saying exactly how you feel about something, sharing exactly what your opinion is, just sharing, you know. He's sharing his, you're sharing yours, and you guys are now married, and that was your first date. So there might be something from that. Well, I don't have a big, broad answer for that. I do know where I stand on, hopefully, on self-sufficiency. And this is something I've told my kids, um, that before you're in a relationship, you have to be self-sufficient. And that doesn't mean, you know, you're an island or you're, you're so closed off that you can't compromise or can't welcome somebody else onto the island, if you will. Mm-hmm. But you got to know where you stand on things and who you are and who you are and then be open to the idea of oh there's change well there's going to be change there's now two of you right so where does that go how does that work Uh, and i don't i don't know i don't have all the answers but so far so good all right yay Yay, love it all right so thank you for joining us for our first episode we covered a lot here today we talked about compromise we talked about what it's like being married versus single if you want to hang out with your girlfriends or what that whole situation is like, please feel free to add to the conversation or bring up any other topics or questions around that and ask us on our Facebook page, Single Ladies Married Women at Facebook. And we'll see you at the next episode. Monica? Just threw it right to me, huh? (laughs) (laughs) Um, I'm, I'm very excited about this. I will wrap this up by saying I am very excited about this conversation and as it grows, we plan on having some guests here Uh, single and married men and women because, you know, this is only half the... Half of the team. Yeah. Half and we'll the, be going to locations, which is great. Yeah, that's true, too. That's we've we've got a couple of places uh, scoped out already. Um, but what are what are you interested in, in talking about? If there's something specific, please let us know and... Um, We'll bring in what we think. We'll bring in what we read about, and um, we'll take it from there. I think that's uh, what we have right now. That's right. Yes. Thanks for (laughs) joining. Sounds like we're we're signing off. Maybe maybe a minute early. All right. Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes early. So So thank you. Thank you for listening, and tune in for more. I hope your Thanksgiving was great. This is the week after Thanksgiving that we're doing this. And and you're gearing up for the holiday season. And we're going to talk some more about that on our next episode. And not only Christmas, but all those winter holidays coming up. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Bye. Bye. Have a great day.